This is the second part. Check the description for the first part of the tutorial. The next effects we will add don't show up immediately after dying. Instead, they show up after a small delay. After the play sound 2D node, add a 1.5 seconds delay. And then add a sequence node, which we will use for the rest of the effects. The first effect that we will add to the sequence is to display the screen in black and white. We will achieve this by updating the post-process settings of the character's follow camera. Select the follow camera component. The values we need to update are located in post-process, color grading, saturation. Enable saturation and set our GNB values to zero. Compile and press play. You'll notice that now our camera displays in black and white. We will need to do this saturation change when the character dies. Revert the changes and let's move on. Drag the follow camera component to the graph and search for set post process settings. From post process settings, drag and select make post process settings. In the details panel, search for color grading global. Open it and enable saturation. Now, from the saturation pin, drag and search for make vector 4. The x, y and z values correspond to r, g and b respectively. Leave every value as 0 except for the last one, which will be 1. Compile, save and press play. You'll notice that when death, the camera switches to black and white after a 1.5 seconds delay. In Dark Souls, the screen does not switch to black and white immediately, but instead it slowly fades out the colors. To achieve this effect, we can use a timeline. Before doing the set of the post-process settings, add a new timeline. Name it Black and White Timeline. Connect the sequence to the Play from Start pin and the update pin to the set post process settings. Open the timeline with double click, set 2 as the length, and add a new float track. Name it current value. Add two new keys to the timeline and set time 0 and value 1 in the first one, and set time 2 and value 0 in the second one. We will be using this value to update the R, G and B values of the post-process saturation. It will go from 1 to 0 in the length of 2 seconds. Go back to the event graph and connect the new current value output to X, Y and Z of the vector 4 node. Compile, save and press play you'll notice that the transition of the black and white screen is still happening and colors fade out in two seconds instead of being instantly. The next effect is a death sound effect. The one I found gives a similar feeling to the original Dark Souls effect. It's called Dark Bell and you can find it on Pixabay. It is eating the assets you downloaded but I'll leave a link in the description anyways to credit the author. In the character blueprint, in the next sequence pin, add a play sound to the node. In sound, search and select dark bell. Compile, save and press play. Now the dead sound is set. The last effect we will add is the you died message. For this, go to the dsdev directory, right click, go to user interface and select widget blueprint. As the parent class, select user widget. Name it wbp underscore you died message. Open it and add the elements we will use. One canvas panel, one border, and one text. 
select the border and set the following parameters. In Anchors, select this option. Set position Y and offset right to 0. Set size to 100. Set the Y value of alignment to 0 0.5. Set brush color to black. And then set alpha to 0 0.25. This way it has transparency. Now select the text element. Center the horizontal alignment. Center the vertical alignment. In the content, set you died as the message. Set color and opacity to a dark red. Open the font section and set size to 60. Then, in the lower editor bar, open animations. Add a new animation and name it message animation. For border, we will animate the opacity. We will make a fade in and a fade out of the element, which will include the text element. Select the border element. Select the animation you just created. Add a new track and select the border option. In border, add a new track and select render opacity. At zero seconds, add a key and set zero as the value, which will make the element to be 100% transparent. At 0 0.75 seconds, add a new key and set one as the value, which will make the element 100% visible. At six seconds, add a new key and set one as the value, so we make sure the element is 100% visible until that time. At 7 seconds, add a new key and set 0 as the value, to hide the element again. Press play in the animation and you will see the fade in and fade out animations working. Next, let's add the text animation, which will simply be an increase in the scale from 0 0.5 to 1 in the length of 0 0.25 seconds. Select the text element. Select the message animation. Add a new track and select the text option. In text, add a new track at 0 seconds and select transform. Open transform and add a new scale track at 2.5 seconds. Go back to 0 seconds, open scale and set 0 0.5 in both values. Press play in the animation and now the text is also animated. Last, deselect the message animation, select the border element and set render opacity to zero. So by default it's hidden from the UI and is only visible during the animation. Now go to the graph in the top right corner. Delete all the default events and add a new custom event. Name it Show Message. Drag the animation reference to the graph and from it call the play animation function as part of the event. Compile, save and go to the character blueprint. Search for the begin play event. And at the end, add a create widget node. Select the widget you just created as the class. Right click on return value and press promote to variable. Name this new variable message widget. You will need the reference to call the custom event and play the animation. After setting the variable, Drag and call the add to view per function to add the widget to the screen. Go to the death event of the one key, add a new pin in the sequence node, and call the show message event using the widget reference.
compile, save and press play. You'll see that now we have all the Dark Souls death elements in place, including the message. Before we leave, an improvement we can implement is to restart the level after the character dies and all the effects are finished. Add a new ping in the sequence node. Add an 8 seconds delay. And call the function open level by name. Set a third person map as the name of the level. Compile, save and press play. Now the level will restart after the character dies and the message is shown. That's it for the tutorial. I hope you like it. If so, I invite you to give it a like, subscribe to the channel and follow me on social networks. I'll be uploading Unreal Engine 5 tutorials frequently and right now I'm working on an entire course for beginners. Thank you for joining and hope to see you in the next video.